in the blink of an eye, the sea sector of elephant death has gone backwards. Later, the Kanaka Atu trees ran back. The birds of the air flew back. Streams, ponds, villages, temples, halls all flowed back and disappeared. A herd of deer raced with the elephant for some distance. The deer also failed and fell behind. Only the elephant was moving ahead. How far and how long, Punguzali does not know anything. But Punguzali wondered if this elephant was still going to Ezla. Can you have crossed the island three times in such a long time? No, no. This elephant did not cross the country of Ela. It was passing the earth. It is going from the south end of the world to the north end. Climbing on its back, I also present the earth. Am I the only one? Prince. At first, when the elephant started running away, Punguzali was a little scared. Along with the fear, there was a reluctance to know what was happening. Two or three times the prince looked back at her and smiled. Then her fear and hesitation disappeared. She was overwhelmed with boundless excitement. For a while she climbed on a moth akaja in this flower world. Suddenly somehow she went to heaven. She was seated on Devendra's Aravata in heaven. A procession was going on in the airy streets of Aravatham. The Karpaka trees showered her with sweet flowers. The Gandas flew behind her, raising beautiful walls from musical instruments. Apsara women came dancing. On both sides of the skyway where the procession went, the star lamps blazed and shone like Jokaj Jathai. Behold, the speed of the Aravata slows down. Suddenly it has come to earth. It has come to the forests of Eza. The elephant stooped down and tapped its trunk. Its ear says something. Sick. He is not an elephant, isn't it Devendran? No, isn't he the prince? The elephant came to the bank of a pond surrounded by trees on all four sides and stood quietly. A little anxiously, Punguzali looked to see if a crowd had come and stood on the bank to welcome and entertain the prince. No. She looked to see if the horses kept coming and it was not. She looked at the pond, and the blooming lilies and red water lilies were entwined with vines. They surrounded her on all four sides. The flowers embraced her on her cheeks and shoulders and all over her body. Then vines of vile flowers gripped her tightly and suffocated her. It was as if the body had been thrown upside down from the clutches of the flowers. The elephant folded its big forelegs and crouched down. Then it folded its hind legs and lay down on the ground. The prince jumped down from the elephant's neck. Flower. Punguzali reached her senses with her body shivering. Sir. Is it difficult to come from heaven to earth? She muttered and got down. The elephant got up again and snapped a branch from a big tree on the bank of the pond and stuffed it into his huge mouth. Aromas Hivarma went to the bank of the pond and sat down. He also asked Fung Kuzali, who was standing hesitantly, to come near and sit. The face of the butterfly was reflected in the clear water. Due to the running of the elephant and the agitation that took place at that time, her face became red and rivaled the red lotus flower. Seeing her face in the water, the prince said, Samadra Kumari. I like you very much. Said. Lily flowers and red water flowers moved again and kissed the whole body of Punghuali. Do you know why I like you? Asked the prince. The sky, the sky, the pond. The flowers in it and the trees on the banks of the pond were spinning before the eyes of the gardener. Everybody I know wants me to do as they please. Only you happily consented to do my bidding. I will never forget this favor, Sumutra Kumari. Punghwali's body became a harp. All her nerves became the nerves of a lion. The golden fingers touched those nerves and made sweet music in Devakanam too. Senadhapati and Parthibendra have conspired together to prevent my journey. Senadipati has created many obstacles on our way. He hastily sent men ahead of us and arranged to entertain the villagers. Parthibendra has hurriedly gone to Trikonamalet. From there it is his intention to board a ship and come to the mouth of Thondamana in front of us. Aha! They thought I didn't know their trick. With your help I defeated their trick. 
Bonguzali suddenly remembered what he had done. It was as if Yama's messengers were shaking her alive in hell. Sir! They all tried to escape from being captured by the enemy. I am the sinner. I am going to take them to be captured. After saying that, Pungazali was amazed. Adid. What is this? I had such a good opinion of you. Have you become like them? I did not do this harm because of my own wisdom. I became mad because of their words of desire. Now my wisdom is clear. I am going. And said Pungazali jumped up. Prince touched her arm lightly to stop her from running away. At that time there was no other work for the virgins of the world. They mixed the extract of vanilla with sandalwood and sprinkled it on the flower pot. She was completely exhausted, paralyzed, and sat down again. Covering her face in both her hands, Vima began to cry. Samadra Kumari! I wanted to tell you something important. If you are going to cry like this, there is no need to tell you. You have to leave immediately. Pung J. Lai looked up at him, wiping away her tears. That's right, listen. You said they were all trying to save me from being taken prisoner? That's true. Do you know what that's for? Because of their love for themselves. I am the only victim. Wait, wait. Everyone loves me. Do you know why? Some soothsayers and astrologers have told me, that I'm going to be an emperor one day. So everyone's trying to put me on a throne and put a crown on my head. Greedy. Sir. If they desire that, what is wrong with it? Are they not worthy to be emperors of the three worlds, if only of this world? Ah. You talk like them. Girl. There is no prison like a palace in this world, no altar like a throne, no punishment like the wearing of a crown. If I told all this to others, they would not agree, I thought you would at least agree. Pung Hwali's eyelids fluttered like the wings of a silkworm. She looked at the princes with white eyes filled with curiosity. Ocean girl. Tell me the truth. If I told you to sit on a throne for the rest of your life, would you sit? Asked the prince. Pung Hwali thought for a while. Then, I won't. She said clearly. See? Then why do you want to subject me to that punishment alone? Aren't you born into royalty? What about being born into a royal family? Fortunately, God does not want me to undergo this punishment. I have an elder brother to rule the kingdom, there is also a son of my great father. He also wants to rule the kingdom. Aha! Has it reached their ears? Said Punghuali. Good story. Did you think I didn't know? So the throne of Tanjavur is not going to be left without a man to sit on it. And I have no desire for a kingdom to wear a crown and rule. What do they want? Punghuali asked. Listen, I tell you. Did we not long ago sit on this Madhagaja and travel? I desire to enter all such forests and wildernesses and roam like the Sandamarut. I desire to board ships and cross the seas. I desire to climb the summits of high mountains. Beyond the seas are many Sri Lankas like this Sri Lanka, I have heard that there are so many great continents like Bharatakhanda. I wish to go there and see the wonders of their respective countries. Pungazali was listening with her mouth open as if she was going to swallow the words spoken by the prince. Curiosity was uncontrollable, sir. Will you take me with you when you go there? She asked. All I said were my wishes. Who saw that they were going to come true? Said the prince. Bungujali came from dream world to earth world. Sir. Then why do you have to go to Tanjavur now? She said. That's what I started to say. By then you've changed the subject and gone somewhere else. Samadra Kumari. There's a powerless dumb woman who talks with her mouth open on this island of Ceylon wandering around like a paranoid. Do you know her? Asked Prince Aromas Hivarma. Bunguzali Atanga was astonished and said, I know, Prince. Why do you ask? She said. I'll tell you the reason later. How do you know that woman? 
What do you know about her? He asked. Sir. I lost the mother who bore me when I was a child. Then it was that old woman who gave me motherly love. She is my guru, my goddess, what else do you ask of her? Does that old woman have a permanent abode? Is she always wandering around? When approaching Sri Lanka from Kodakare, there is an island called Buddhathivu. There is a rock cave in it. That is where the Amma usually stays. That is where I first saw them. Did you see me there? Yes. That mother has written some beautiful pictures in that rock cave. I saw their image in those pictures too. Then one day when I saw them in person at Kadakare, that's why I was amazed. Oh! Now everything is clear to me. Even the unexplainable becomes clear. Samadra Kumari. Do you know about the relationship between that old woman and me? I assumed there must be some relationship. But I don't know what relationship. Pungazali. That old lady is my great-grandmother. She should have sat on the Tanjavur throne by right. Oh my god! Really? In this situation, I should inform him of my findings before anything untoward happens. Samadra Kumari. That is why I want to go to Tanjore urgently. Don't you see now how important your help is to me? Punghuali heaved a sigh as she listened to the prince's words with interest. Oh God! Why did you put so much happiness and suffering in human life? She murmured. Then looking at the prince, he said, Sir! It is my birthright if this demon helps you. But why should I help you? If you had told the Sinadipati etc., wouldn't they have sent themselves to Tanjore? She said. No, I don't want them to tell anyone. It won't seem important to them, who are bent on putting me on the throne somehow. I don't want to tell them all about my father's private life. They won't understand. I ask you for another favor. Samadra Kumari. That's why I stopped the elephant here. I also have the title of emperor. The astrologers who gave the royal throne also told me that there will be many dangers, many continents, in my life. If something like that happens to me on this journey. If I can't meet my father, you must go to the emperor. You must somehow meet him and tell him that my great-grandmother is alive. If he likes, the old lady should be taken to him. Will you do all these things, Punghuali? They will not face any danger, danger will run away from them you must go safely to Tanjavur. Maybe if something happens to me you'll do as I ask, won't you? I will, Prince. To whom else can I entrust this important matter? You tell me, and we shall see. I have been entrusted with my duty. Am I not of use with this? Shall I bid farewell? Said Punghuali. Her voice was wet with tears. Ah! How is that? Have we not yet reached the mouth of the Thondamana? Have we not yet seen the Chola warships? How can we bid farewell before then? Be angry. Grit your teeth and endure my company for a little while longer. Mount the elephant again and come with me a little farther. The ship flying the tiger flag. You can leave me when you see it in the distance, said the prince. Without replying, Pung J. Lai walked towards the place where the elephant was standing and the prince also went. At his words the elephant knelt down. Both climbed on its back. The prince did not drive away the elephant as before. But it went quickly. Mermaid. Did I tell you about some of my favorite things? Why don't you tell me what your favorite things are? Aromas Hivarmar said. I love riding a buffalo. I love standing on top of a rock in the middle of the night and watching the marauding devils pass by. You're a good queer girl. Call her a mad woman, as her friends say. I will not regret it. Then she likes to get into the little boat and go on in the middle of the waves. And especially when the sea is eddied, my excitement is boundless. Then one moment the boat will climb the waves and reach for the heavens, the next it will plunge into the underworld. There is nothing I like more than that. Just before this elephant ran like mad, I was still so excited. Ah! Punguzali! 
If Lord Muraga had come to seek your smile, he would have lost completely. If Karama had sent the elephant's face to frighten Valley, none of that strategy would have worked for you. Said the prince. As they approached the mouth of the Tontaman River, they said, Ah! What is this? Pungazali exclaimed. What to do? Asked the prince eagerly. Are there no trees with tiger flags where I saw them? What will you think of me? I have become the one who deceived them and brought them as if the general had suspected me. She said. I will never think like that. You fool! There is no reason for you to lie and trick me. Why not, prince, could it not be because of love? Could it not be that an evil woman has done such a thing, infatuated with the lord of Pawnee, whom the whole world admires as equal to Cupid in beauty and Arcuna in prowess? Woman! Had the commander been here at this moment he might have suspected so. But your mind and mine have no room for such mad thoughts. Sir! There is a warrior princess named Venati Devi in the old palace, would you say the same about her? Yes, yes. I haven't forgotten that. This general and myself are trying to tie that girl to my neck. Perhaps the ghost girl has the same desire for her desire to sit on the throne of the Chola clan. I am not responsible for that, Pungujali. Let it go. Where were the ships when you saw them? Asked the prince. There they were standing at that end. I remember it so well. Said Punghuali. So what? Couldn't we move a little further over here and stop? Let's go all the way to the beach and have a look. Said the prince. Well if the ships are gone, why go and look for them now? Said Punghuali. Ah! You may think so. But nothing disappoints me like that. Said the prince. Three hundred years ago, the Sri Lankan prince Manavan Man came to Kanchapuram and entered Saran. Emperor Mamala sent a large force to restore the kingdom to him. The forces he sent landed in this area. At that time there was only a small stream at the place where Tontaman River is. They cut the stream deep and wide to make it convenient for ships to dock and troops to land. Later that stream came to be known as Tontamanaru. Near the mouth the river meandered. The trees were thick on both sides. This made it convenient for the ships to stay hidden from the sea. Pungazali had seen the trees that had come to take the prince captive in a place where a river entered the earth and there was a lot of water. Those trees are no longer visible where they were first seen. That is, the sails, flags etc. are not visible. A closer look at the place revealed an amazing sight. A ship left the flood and went deep into the earth and got buried in the mud. Its mat trees, vines, etc. were blown away and decayed. It does not appear that there were any humans in it. Pungazali knew very well that it was one of the ships she had seen two days before. One of the ships that came to take the prince prisoner, Pungazali drowned in the sea of surprise when she saw that it was trapped in the mud.